Hey, good evening. It is December 24th already where I am. And I wrote the update on December 22nd and I entitled it When They Found Him. Them being the Magi, the wise men of Persia coming to find the Lord Jesus, the King of Kings. And the image uh, pertains to us, wise men still seek him. So we are like the Magi of old, we're called to seek the Lord daily, but also wait for his coming and seek the clues in the scriptures, in prophecy, the heavenly signs, what is happening on the earth. And there is a beautiful uh, reminder on Christmas of uh, them finding the Lord. So recall how in the first set of videos about this article, how David and Jonathan, how they reconvened after the winter solstice to then uh, go separate ways um, permanently. And the winter solstice ended today. So it actually lasts for three days visually. And then the sun from the vantage point of Earth starts to rise again toward the summer solstice. So we are in that beautiful high expectation of the type of the bride and the type of the covenant maker, the groom, uh, meeting one another again and then parting ways. And for us, that is a foreshadowing of the rapture. But the narrative of the Magi has a beautiful reference to Christmas too. So December, the solstice started on the 21st of December. And recall how we discussed how it reflected a birthing pattern. We know we are waiting to be born into heaven. And we also know that Satan will be cast down or burst into the earthly realm. And we can see how Jupiter and Saturn have moved toward the conjunction. And they are still in this conjunct state. And then... I believe about December 26, 27, they will part ways again in Capricorn, the sacrificial goat. And there's also these heavily sparkles in um, uh, the Ursid meteor shower. So this is the uh, smaller sheepfold, the Ursa minor sheepfold, and that points to the rapture of the bride. That is a much smaller group than the larger sheepfold, Ursa Major, which points to the Tribulation Saints. So the Lord is shining a light in the heavens and uh, highlighting the minor sheepfold. And if you look at the image and the position of the minor sheepfold, you can actually see that it's totally enveloped by the dragon. So that is pretty much how we are positioned. So the devil keeps a really close eye on us and vice versa. So if we go uh, to another sign in the heavens, we can see that the moon and Mars are conjuncting today. And it does, they do so in the constellation Pisces. And that is just above the sea monster. So that is the conjunction of the moon, the bright type, with Mars, which is a type of war, but also associated with the Archangel Michael. And then the, move will, the moon will progress from Mars to tomorrow. It will line up with Uranus. And remember how we talked about that Uranus actually represents Enoch. And that takes place in the constellation Aries. It's not depicted over here, but Uranus is positioned underneath the head stars of the constellation Aries. And then the moon will progress onwards towards the celestial silver gate. And it will pass the Pleiades cluster. That is the representation of the seven churches. And then it will progress onward towards the Hyades, the congregated. So the ones who have come out of the seven churches, and that is in the head of the bull Taurus, to them progress onwards to the center of the celestial silver gate on December 28th. 
So yesterday was the heliacal rising of Antares. And that is the heart of the scorpion, the enemy with the death sting. And the helical rising is the first visible rising of a star before the sun. And it was an ancient marker for the start of winter. winter. And we know that the Lord is pointing to the winter time in many scriptures pertaining to the rapture. So recall how we talked about the birthing pattern in the conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn and the fish shape, but also the shape of the baby's head standing or crowning, which is the final phase before the head is actually being birthed, is called the crowning phase. So um, this week, the uh, Kilauea volcano in Hawaii, which is in the center of the Pacific Ring of Fire, actually started uh, spewing lava again. So the solstice ring of fire is opening up. Hawaii, the cutthroat island, I'm going to explain why I name it that way, speaks and spews again. And I believe it is signaling a smelling of the coming brimstone and fire, but also a warning to the lukewarm church, people who are part of the church of Laodicea, that they in like manner may be spewed out by the Lord. So when their lukewarmness um, uh, comes to the surface, and that is so beautifully envisioned in this volcano because if the combination of lava and cold water produces first lukewarm water, but then it can actually uh, not just evaporate, but cause a hydrovolcanic explosion. And that is the underlying risk or danger with regard to the Kilauea volcano. So if we look at how the main island of Hawaii is shaped, it is actually shaped as a sacrificial lamb or a sacrificial goat. Here you see an overlay. But if you look at the uh, geological structure of the island, it is actually shaped as an ancient sacrificial altar. So here you have the four horns of the altar and the ramp toward the altar. We also recognize this shape and this positioning in the constellation Libra. And that is now pictured as two scales, but biblically it is the four uh, points actually reflect the um, four horns of the altar. So Hawaii is shaped both as a sacrificial lamb and a sacrificial goat, but also as Elijah's altar with four horns. And this section, the goat's neck section, you can see that with the red ribbon, which is tied about around the sacrificial goat's neck, is actually called the section of the Helena slump. And there have been lots of fractures over here. It has been destabilized for years on end. And this is actually the area of the Kilauea volcano, but also the area which is prone to risk for hydrovolcanic explosion. And Hawaii is in the center of the Pacific Ring of Fire. And that is pictured over here. And if we look at the enemy signaling in the iPad Goat, the location of Hawaii is being pictured in a couple of scenes. This is one of them. So a conjunction or a hit between the vessel where Osama bin Laden is pictured, in addition to the island of Hawaii. But another picture which pertains to this time is the serpent shaped in the form of the constellation Capricorn, where we saw this Jupiter-Saturn conjunction, in addition to the uh, Hierophant uh, boy, coupled with vaccines and death, and him being shaped in and clothed like a sun prince. And that also ties to Joseph. So Hawaii's fire and brimstone of past eruptions, the recent sequence of raging prophetic storms, and the potential, even likelihood, of an induced hydrovolcanic explosion. And that is being uh, manipulated by geological uh, fissures. That is actually a foreboding of what is imminently coming upon the whole world. 
like the judgments that came over Sodom and Gomorrah. We know that will be repeated in the end times. Kilauea means spewing or much spreading, reflecting prophecies of the birth ring of fire flaming up, uh, the standing or crowning head phase of fiery judgment, and perhaps even a dire warning toward the lukewarm of their risk of being spewn out by the Lord. And Monikia is also the primary location and the backdrop of the faked moon landings, and it forms a pivotal part of the NASA-endorsed heliocentric paradigm. So we know that biblically we have an Earth-centric cosmology, and um, this location of Hawaii has often been used as a backdrop for uh, faked moon landings. So in turn, uh, part of the coming great deception and demonic manifestation after the rapture cloaked as space alien visitation. So one of the ways the enemy is going to explain away the rapture is by means of pulling both the flat earth card, so the distortion which has been rolled out over the world that the universe is sun-centric or heliocentric as opposed to earth-centric, um, in addition to intelligent life not being interdimensional but from quote-unquote outer space. So the alien card will be used to explain away the rapture. So many are aware that Hawaii is ge geologically shaped as a goat or a lamb with the Helena slump as the cutthroat section prophesied to be the location of its sacrifice. Much like a lamb or goat receives the lethal incision right over there. And based on the insight the Lord has provided regarding the biblical meaning and celestial signs, we discern the island is shaped as a biblical altar as well reflecting the celestial sign of Libra, the altar of redemption. Thus, the theme of the sacrificial atonement and Hawaii are more easily understood. So this is the exact location where Jupiter and Saturn are being positioned in the heavens in front of the head of the sacrificial goat. Hawaii is situated in the center of the Pacific Ring of Fire, a location fitting for a sacrificial birth or a fiery stirring and rising from below, as well as a geological manifestation of the Lord soon to spew out Laodiceans and their ungodly doctrines, to baptize them in rushing waters and fiery trials as the prophetic chapter of tribulation will shortly begin. Joel 2.28 speaks in verse 30 of the earth of blood and fire and pillars of smoke, the sun being turned to darkness, the moon into blood, before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. So if you'd like to read more about these prophecies with regard to Hawaii, you can uh, do so in the linked article over here. Um, and especially how Hawaii is not just a sacrificial goat or lamb, but the geology is a reflection of a biblical altar. And that correlates with the days of Elijah. And we know the altar of the sixth trumpet of the book of Revelation is the golden altar of incense, which is in the most holy place in heaven before God, not on the earth. So the source article uh, states that there must be an earthly conduit, a mirror that connects the altar of incense in heaven with the earth as the heavenly sign for the sixth trumpet. Uh, clearly illustrates a casting down of the censer from heaven to earth. So that I believe these are the stones of judgment. So we read in Revelation 8, 5, And the angel took the censer, and filled it with fire of the altar, and cast it to the earth. And there were voices and thunderings, and lightnings, and an earthquake. So in the next video, we will talk about the time, not just the season, but the exact date when the Magi found Jesus. And that was a little over a year and a couple of months after he had been born. So they found him not as a baby in a manger. 
it as a young child or a toddler in a house. And I am so excited to tell you about that. So I hope to see you in the next video.